What's up, guys? Your boys are back. I'm Ryan, my man, George. What's shaking, guys? How y'all living out there? Shout out to the free thinkers. And of course, shout out to everybody that's been following us on Def to Radio, which is D-E-A-F number two radio. That's our Instagram. Make sure you guys follow us there. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, make sure the notification bell set to all so you get all of our videos as they drop. Upcoming artists, make sure you check out the link in the description. We'll do about 60 seconds of your song in the front of one of our upcoming videos to get you some exposure. So make sure you check that out. All right, guys. So we're going to get into this little Yachty joint, man. The Black Seminole. Mm. But before we get into that, man, shout out to Pressable, man. That's one of our affiliates, man. Uh, if you guys are looking for a hosting site, they handle all the day-to-day -day stuff, like the maintenance and all that kind of stuff. So you could just focus on your business, man. I really wish we'd have known about that because, you know, we're setting up our site. And, you know, it takes a long time to set this stuff up, man. So uh, Pressable can really be an option for you. And if you guys are interested in that, make sure you use our code, which is LIV50. It'll get 50% off. So make sure you guys check all that out in the uh, description. Okay, Lil Yachty. Um, <laughs> very familiar with Lil Yachty. We've heard some joints from Lil Yachty. And... Quite frankly, man, we've we've avoided Lil Yachty because didn't want to shit on him. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you guys probably have looked at the title and it said Lil Yachty lost to Vegas. You guys know that we we tend to to we rock with a lot of shit actually. Yeah. That, that there's a big misconception about us just because we 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 uh value. Value bars and value value sort of the high level writing and rap doesn't mean that we can't like some of the other stuff as well, the alternative rap and all that other stuff. And, and Lil Yachty, I think, kind of fits that bill. I think I've always looked at Lil Yachty as sort of new school, more modern rap, um, as far as um, I can remember, because I've heard maybe a handful of songs from him. But what is really interesting about this song is that we got a heavy influx of people, many of which were not even from the rap world. Yeah, These are true. people that we know are like rockheads, saying that we really need to check this out. Um, I'm not gonna lie, people have been said that it, it gives them old school classic rock vibes. It did intrigue us because, I mean, Lil Yachty is definitely not, I would never think that Lil Yachty would go that route based off of what I've, I've heard from him in the past. So let's see, man. He's got a, a new album out. It looks like it's called Let's Start Here. And um, let's rock out. Lil Yachty, The Black Seminole. from Pink Floyd? Is it uh, Comfortably Numb? Is that what the one was? Is, is, uh, is there anybody in there? Yeah. <laughs> right? Pink Floyd, I think it was Comfortably Numb, you know? So, yeah, I, I'm hearing, uh, what yeah. I, when I first heard it, I was like, is it kind of like the who? With the with the keyboard? Or with the, what I believe was the keyboard at the beginning of that? Or of this? In the way he's singing is sort of Pink Floyd-like. It has a very psychedelic, yeah. classic rock feel so yeah i kind of i wish that you would have been super caught off guard if you got y'all didn't tell us that you know going into this but it still is different for him you know it's very very you know it's just it's creative for him right you know definitely yeah. different man um i'm interested to see where he takes this because I, I have no idea right now so let's keep it going a sex symbol the black seminal i freaking rambo What's wrong, Mr. Man? Your eyes are low, and you're walking with both hands on your head. His response, he's on a clean, clean high. Both feet up on the ground, but his head's wet. Black 
like Seminole, head general. Distant connections, a large interval. A black man with mouths to feed. with you he's really really pushing himself man uh, creatively like the way that this transition you know for those of you who don't know we always say this on the metal side like with people who watch our metal videos like y'all do know that we have a whole side of the channel which is yeah. just hip-hop based we we'll say that to the rap page i don't know if y'all know but we have a whole <laughs> side of the channel that does metal and rock shit too so from you know we've gotten a decent amount of experience listening to metal and rock these days and we're very familiar with pink floyd make sure you guys go check out our um our Pink Floyd reactions, yep. you know, and, and, and The Who and Black Sabbath and all of our old school rock joints, Rush. The way he transitioned and the vocals in this is very, very, very in line with what uh, we've heard from a lot of classic rock. So he's um, he's just taking it there. So it looks like they sampled, we're reading here on, online that it says they, that they, they sampled One of These Days by Pink Floyd and um, Speak To Me by Pink Floyd as well. So um, I don't think we've heard those songs because we did... Um, Comfortably Numb, right? Which you mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, what else? 
We got dog. We did dogs, which is on Patreon. If yep. you guys are interested, make sure you check that out on Patreon. We did dogs. We've done Shine on You, Crazy Diamond. We've mm-hmm. done Wish You Were Here, which is almost at a million views. Make sure you check all these out. So we we've done yeah. a decent amount here, man. You know, so we haven't heard uh, one of these days and speak to me by Pink Floyd. Those two songs. So it looks like they took those. I don't know if it was a combination of both of those two songs and sampled it, or maybe it was just in parts that they sam- sampled uh, those two songs, but. You saying that he's really going there? Um, yeah, man. I really got to give him credit for doing something that's uh, out of his wheelhouse, man. This seems well. You know what? I'm gonna re- I'm gonna retract that because uh, Little Yachty has this song that sounds like he's high. Or if Poland. You, what was the song? What walk to Poland? I took the walk <laughs> to Poland. You would know that, so no. That's no, not no, the, I don't know that that's one. not the one. I don't know that one. <laughs> it still sounds like his DNA to me. How he's approaching the song is different. It's a departure, you know, it's more um outside of his wheelhouse. But I think how he sounds specifically. Right. Yeah. How he sounds is, yeah, is how the music is different, but how yeah, he sounds, yeah. yeah. He I sounds can, I can get behind so that. So you know what? I feel like, yeah, this is bravo, man, because I think that that is maybe, maybe he came up with that on his own and maybe someone else was like, man, you know what you would probably sound good on? And I think he sounds great on this. That's something that Pink Floyd would do. I think you could really uh, blend with that well. And I think that that's what's, what's happening here. After hearing A Walk From Poland, that is like 30 <laughs> seconds and that went crazy. And the way he sung that, I was just like, that was very different, but still yet catchy. And yeah. Broccoli, I don't like the song, but it is very catchy. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> I understand like the little kitty piano. I get why that went off for a lot of people. So... Kudos to him. Kudos to him. But, but this is definitely a step outside of, I think, hip hop for him. Yes. I really mm-hmm. do. So let's keep it going. That transition threw me off, though, because he could have ended it and I'd yep. have been like, bravo. But the transition, let's keep it going. Gordon's uh, contribution, weird ass contribution. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I actually did think you know her voice was very, very sort of kind of eclectic. But I think she actually did a really good job in in, in transforming the song when that when, when the transition came. I really thought she carried that out well. Very sort of an artistic 
emotional sort of display uh, vocally there. I actually thought her contributions were really, really cool. At first, I, th I think me and Ryan both thought it was Lil Yachty. Then she started like actually killing it, killing it. I was like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's him. And then we looked and we saw that it was Diana Gore. So big shout out to Diana Gore. But if I'm looking at the lyrics to this song, man, he had this line here. He said, love is not a lie. It just feels like a Tarantino movie scene. I find that very interesting because when you think of like Quentin Tarantino's movies, you think of like Kill Bill, you think of uh, Dust Hate, Dawn. Dust Till Dawn, Hateful Eight and all this other stuff. And love is not a lie. So what he's inferring there is like, you know, it feels like love is a lie. Like it's something that's just love is dead or whatever the case might be. No, nah, it's not. It's not a lie, but it comes with, I think it comes with a lot of heartache. It comes with hurt. It comes with pain. Mm -hmm. So it feels like it doesn't exist. I think is what he's saying. Now, mm -hmm. how that ties into the song, I feel like he kind of started the song by saying, he said, what's wrong? Your eyes are low. And essentially he says, uh, you're walking with your hands on your head. His response is he's on a clean, clean high. So when I think about Tarantino movie and, and he says clean, clean high, and I think about how this sounds, I think of this being sort of, uh, you know, reminiscent of being something being drug induced, you know what I mean? The psychedelia, right? It comes, it comes with um, almost taking a trip. But he is saying throughout this that he's saying sex symbol, black symbol, uh, black seminal, right? Um, African ramble with more ammo. And then he said, can't be escape. I'm on every channel. He says that as well. And he says distant connections, a large interval, a black man with miles to feed, embracing equality uh, throughout greed. So I think he's channeling um, uh, his ancestors with this, right? The black seminal. And I feel like he's um, relating it to modern day in that now throughout modern day, I, I, I'm like this black chief. I'm this black, uh, a powerful figure. And as it relates to modern day music, it's just like, I'm on every channel. You can't escape my influence. You can't escape the mark that I'm sort of leaving, I think is what he's saying uh, throughout this. I'm a sex symbol, maybe fetishized to a degree, right? Um, so I think it's a combination of him just it being, it, it's, it being reminiscent of something you, uh, of a sort of a crazy, wacky, high trip to him maybe making a statement about just the uh, current influence on black music. And it's interesting that he's also using a Pink Floyd song to then, in my opinion, almost like sort of provide a resurgence for people who don't even maybe know about Pink Floyd, um, showing his influence in a sense maybe as well. So I think he's connecting like ancestry here and making a statement about the power of black music and black influence is maybe what he's saying throughout this song. Even throughout, he said, again, embracing equality throughout greed. I think maybe capitalism. I think maybe just with all odds stacked against him, he's uh, embracing the the sort of trek to equality. I'm just throwing shit out there, man. I'm, yeah. I'm going to keep it real, man. I'm throwing shit at the wall. I get it, I'm throwing shit at the wall. So anyways, man, yeah, good shit uh, from Lil Yachty, man. Very, very creative for him. Um, not something that we're not, we're, we're not like completely unfamiliar with this because we do a lot of classic rock on this channel. We've kind of gotten a feel for it. But I think for what he was doing, man, um, bravo for him trying something different, man. This could easily, he could fall flat trying to do something like this because he's in a genre that does not, and I'll repeat, does yeah. not listen to this style of music. So he, he at least established his roots in a genre that probably, if presented with this sound, would probably just not be very interested. So I'm always for people pushing boundaries, man, and going against the grain a little bit. And it looks like he's made his money. He still did the walk to Poland, so he's still getting in certain bags that hip-hop people can like, but he's also spreading his wings a little bit, showing his chops. And I'm impressed with what he was even, even able to do lyrically here, man. I, you know, it's still thought-provoking lyricism. It isn't just mindless right. nothingness that I've heard in a lot of modern rap. So I just love the uh, the effort, the effort to just try something new and and push artistic boundaries, man. Yeah, I think it was creative, man. I think uh, he, he, took he took a chance with this. I don't know if the whole album is like that. Give us some suggestions. I don't know. Maybe we'll kind of check that out if we don't get uh, a lot of uh, recommendations to, to check it out. But I just think it was creative, man. Uh, not really for me, but um, I do applaud what, what he was able to do here, man. And I think um, that shows um, fearlessness. You know, I'm going to try, you know, fuck it. You know, my, my, uh, my, my, my phrase is nothing beats a failure but a try. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's like, man, let's just try it. Let's see what it, what it does. And I think he, for what he was trying to accomplish, I think he nailed it. I think he nailed it. And I'm and uh Diana, who was that? Diana Gordon, Gordon at the end of that. Um, for a minute there it sounded like little Yachty. So maybe it was little Yachty at the beginning when it first came back in, and then she kind of added um her contribution to it. I thought, dude, for what if if he wanted it to sound like a Pink Floyd-ish type of song, which it seemed like he sampled the two songs from Pink Floyd, 
dude, he accomplished that, man. So um, I, I really give him a lot of credit for being um, experimental and just trying to, you know, do something that was a little bit outside of his uh, wheelhouse, man. That's all I can say. Yo, shout out to Lil Yachty, man. I guess give us more from Lil Yachty, more from this album. Let's see what the rest of it sounds like. Give us some more suggestions. That's the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed that, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I'm George. That's Ryan. Lost in Vegas. We, we out. out.